Assalamu alaikum. This time I have an HP laptop that has a black screen fault. The customer's complaint is that he was running a BIOS update, but it failed. After that, the laptop is no longer work. Let me connect the adapter to show you the blanking code. One, two, three, four, and five. As you can see, we have five blinks on the caps lock LED. Actually, I am not sure if we can count this as five blinks or this is just five sets of one blink. The laptop model number is HP ProBook 640G4 and here is the serial number. I had tried to disconnect the main battery and CMOS battery, also cleaning and replacing the RAM module, but the same issue is still present. This is the motherboard number, but unfortunately there is no available schematic or board view for this motherboard. Anyway, I will connect the adapter to measure some voltages. I have 20 volts on the main current sensing resistor. The main power rail coil has 12 volts. This coil around 1 volt. I don't know what it is for. This coil has 5 volts. The other one has 3.3 .3 volts. I think these two coils are for the CPU V core. I have 0 volt on both. These coils have 1.05 volt, maybe for the PCH. And this one is 1 volt. This coil here has only 0.6 volt. It is so weird. I thought this one for the RAM memory and it must be 1.2 volts. These chips are for the main BIOS and the EC. Bin number 8 has 3.3 .3 volts on each of them. The CPU is cold and I cannot feel any heat from it. That makes sense because the V-core voltage is not exist. Also the fan is spinning at the maximum speed. I will disconnect the adapter and measure the resistance to ground on the V-core. Perhaps it is shorted. I think it is not shorted. 8 ohms looks fine for the CPU. The other phase has 10 ohms. The resistance to ground on the RAM coil is low, maybe because the RAM is connected. Yes, after removing the RAM module, the resistance back to normal. But I still don't understand why there is only 0.6 volt here. It is supposed to be 1.2 volts because our RAM type is DDR4. I don't think this is a BIOS issue at all, but I have to consider the customer's complaint, so I will proceed with flashing the BIOS. Maybe if I had a schematic, I might check the whole motherboard first. These are the BIOS chips. This laptop has two chips. The 256 megabits chip or 32 megabytes is the main BIOS chip, and the 128 megabits chip or 16 megabytes is the EC chip. I will desolder the main BIOS chip, the bigger one, in order to flash it using my SPI programmer. It's always better to take a good quality image for the BIOS chip and the components around it before desoldering the chip. I covered the CPU with aluminum tape to prevent the heat from reaching the top side of the CPU. Also, you need to use any good rosin flux that will help you a lot in this process. I set the temperature to 450 degrees with the minimum airflow. This type of chips need a lot of heat to desolder. It may take about 2 minutes more or less depending on your hot air station. The chip package is WSON8 8x6. You can use any of these adapters but I only have this one for now. You have to be careful with the chip orientation. This is how it should be. I will connect the programmer into my laptop. I'm using new programmer software and I will press on detect. There is an error, the IC not responding. I will double check my solder pads using my soldering iron. Let's try again. Now the software recognized my chip, so the problem was just the soldering. I will choose the same number as written on my chip, W25Q256JV, then press on read IC. 
it is done now it will take like four or five minutes to read a 32 megabytes chip like this i would prefer to press on verify ic it will take more time but this will let you know if the file you read is identical to the file on the chip or not if you succeed in this step you are ready to save the file i will name the file hp brobox 640 g4 old.bin now i will open the new file i made I have to make sure these five options are checked because verifying is very important. Then I will press on write IC. It is done. The full process may take about 10 minutes. Now I will disconnect the programmer, desoldering the chip from the adapter board. Then I will solder it back to the motherboard. So as I expected, the laptop didn't work after flashing the BIOS. The same issue is still present, but I discovered the problem through visual inspection. I think there is a missing component here, and I still don't know what it is. Let's try to figure out this component. First of all, I called the customer. He told me that someone already tried to fix the laptop before me. I think he ripped this component while he was trying to open the bottom cover because this area is very close to the edge. Here is all what I know about that component. We have one bat connected to the ground and the other bat connected to this resistor here. Then both of them are connected to this IC. I have to search by this marking on the IC to find its number. I have found the IC number and downloaded its datasheet. It is NB685A. It is the VRM of the RAM circuit. We have the same marking as on our IC. By comparing this top view image with my real image, I can tell that the missing component is connected to pin number 13 of that IC. I think FB refers to feedback. According to the typical application, the missing component is a pull down resistor, but as you can see, its value is different from one design to another. So I decided to look for the same IC on another similar schematic. I have found the same IC on this one. There are two resistors connected to the feedback bin. The pull up resistor is around 10 kilo ohm. I have measured that one and it is true. The pull down resistor is 10 kilo ohm, so I will solder a 10 kilo ohm resistor for that missing component. Look here, you can adjust the output voltage using this equation. So the voltage on the RAM coil should be like 1.2 volts. That's why I only have 0.6 volt on the RAM coil, because the resistance here is infinity. Here is an image after I placed the missing 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now I have 1.2 volts on the RAM coil. The CPU V core is present too. Therefore, the laptop now is working fine. After all, we cannot be sure if there was a BIOS issue besides the missing resistor or not. But anyway, I am sure from the BIOS file I made because the laptop is working fine. If you want to know how I rebuilt that BIOS, you can check my HP playlist. I have many similar videos for HP Brobook and also Elite Book. I hope you learned something useful from this video. We'll see you soon, inshallah, in another one. Assalamu alaikum.